Good morning. Welcome to the garden. I'm out here with some coffee. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but the lens is probably going to fog up because it is so humid out this morning. Um, that is just August <laughs> in Indiana. Honestly, it is just absolutely oppressively humid today, or right now anyway. Um, but we are going to harvest because there's a lot out here to harvest. Um, I haven't been out here in a couple days. It has been raining pretty steadily, um, like every day or every other day. So for like the last week. So I have not done a garden tour and I apologize, but I'll take you around today and kind of show you what we have going on. I have been doing some things out here in between rainstorms and when it's not 98% humidity outside, like it is right now. Um, Things are growing. The grass is also growing. I need to come out here and weed again. But again, it's rained so much that um, can't weed eat when it's wet. So that's where we're at. Um, I did, have I talked about it in a video? No, I have gotten cucumelons. I have been picking cucumelons. They are so good. Um, I really like them a lot. They are, let me see if I can find one. So if you're not familiar with cucumelons, that's what this huge plant is right here. This is actually two plants. This is what they look like. If I can hold it up. They're little tiny, um, a squirrel just. <laughs> the neighbors behind us have a really tall tulip poplar tree and there was a squirrel in the very top of it and I just watched it fall like halfway down, so. Anyway, um, this is a cucumelon. They're also called Mexican sour gherkins. They look like little tiny, like watermelons, and they taste like a, like a slightly sour cucumber. They're very good. They remind me of like a, like a fruit gusher. Remember when we had those when we were kids? If you're my age, you would know that. Um, how they like kind of pop in your mouth. So if you don't like that, then you wouldn't really like these because they do have like a thicker skin, like not like a grape, but they're like a thicker skin, like a cucumber, but they're so good. I've heard that they're really good as like refrigerator pickles. So once I have enough of them, I'm gonna do that with them, but I've just been eating them. Like they're just, I have them in a little jar in the fridge and I just open the fridge up and just eat some. Like they're just delicious. And the plants are loaded with little tiny cucumelons. I think I am gonna grow these again next year, mostly because I just love how they look, but I'm gonna do them on a cattle panel arch instead of this, <laughs> because I just think it would look really cool on a cattle panel arch. So that's what I'm gonna do for next year. But for now, I am picking cucumelons off of these. Um, it does take a while to pick everything off of this like this because you have to kind of like pick up the plant and like move it around and look Everywhere and it's a process. So oh There's a breeze now. Okay. It's not as bad <laughs> It was so bad um, But yeah, we're gonna harvest some stuff. I see some cucumbers that they picked. I did pull My Chinese snake cucumber plant the one that had the squash bug get in it so that's gone. I am going to replant that probably with another cucumber for the fall. I still have plenty of time. My first frost is estimated at mid-October. Um, so I still have over 60 days until then, but usually it's a little bit later than that. Um, usually it's like around Halloween. It has snowed on Halloween though. So anyway, but that's been our first frost one year was it snowed. <laughs> so on Halloween, which was the weirdest thing ever, but. So we're gonna drink some coffee. We're gonna pick some stuff. I know there's peppers that need picked. Um, there's probably some squash, some cube of butter squash. Also side note, we did try the cube of butter squash and it is delicious. It has a nice thin skin. Um, and I've been picking them, you know, like six to eight inches long and I just like roasted it so good. I actually made um, 
I made like a side the other night and I did some cube of butter squash. I cut some corn off of a cob. I bought four dozen ears of corn from a local guy to can um, and freeze. So I had a couple ear extra ears of that, put that on the sheet pan with the cube of butter squash and then just some cherry tomatoes. Tossed it with some olive oil and topped it with some seasonings and roasted it and it was so good. So a great way to like use up some harvest. Like if you just have like one squash, roast it with some other stuff, you know? Like it's just a really easy way to make a delicious side dish. So I see some big tomatoes that are ripening. So let's, let's, um, yeah, let's, let's go around and see what we got. Okay, we're going into squash land over here in arugula land because I have arugula everywhere. I do see some. So let's pick these. Ow. Oh yeah, look at these. So this has been about the size I've been picking these. Um, not huge. And when I pick squash, I usually just twist it and it breaks off like that. So this is about the size I've been picking them. They're nice and tender and they are delicious. So add that to our basket. Let's see. There's another one over there, but I'm gonna wait until this evening maybe to pick that one. This one has a spider on it. Um, I'll go ahead and take that one too because I'm afraid it'll be too big. Oh, I ripped that one. See, this is the only problem with doing it my way is sometimes you can break your squash, but it's okay. Let's see if we have any zucchini. There's a zucchini over here. And I, oh, there is one. And there's pollination happening in there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Look at all of them in there. Just little babies. Okay, so there is a zucchini back here. This is actually the what is this called? This is the Italian striped zucchini. And this one is kind of a weird shape, but here's our first zucchini, so that's exciting. Add that to the basket. And all over here, remember how I planted dill? <laughs> um, it's in here, like you can see it down in there. It's just being severely scented by all this grass but yeah it's down in there so yeah. this is the state of the garden in August you know it's just ridiculous pole beans doing okay starting to climb um, over here these are already at the top of the panel my Armenian white cucumbers that I planted over here are well, I don't know. This one's like vining, but I don't know. I just don't know. Okay, here's a bean. These are dragon tongue bush beans. So I have one of those. Um, oh, there's a couple more on here. Uh, this is really the first beans that I've picked um, at all. So these are really good. I actually need to leave some on these plants this year so I can save seeds because I don't have any more of those. So, add these to our basket. I don't know why I ended up over here. I was gonna go pick cucumbers and then I ended up in the beans. But, you know, whatever. Basket. We had our nephew here last week and this is his little swing. It needs to go back in the garage, but obviously it's not yet. Um, Squash bug on that. These are the muncher. These are probably my favorite, like, canning cucumber for this year or pickle making cucumber. Um, I haven't canned any yet, but I don't know if I'm going to, honestly. I focused on canning pickles last year and I still have a ton left because I was focused on getting them canned. So I don't know if I'm gonna can any this year or not, but if I do, these are the ones I'm gonna use. All 
All right, so I picked some munchers and some salt and peppers. The green dragon has nothing on it and it's starting to look kind of bad. So I think I'm gonna pull that one out at some point as well. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our basket and we're gonna go over to the peppers because I know there's some peppers that need picked. Um, I'm trying not to step on my honey nut squash plant as I get over here. Okay, we have made it to the peppers. picked a red pepper it's not totally at the bottom it's still a little green but this is exciting so pick some shishitos some lemon spice jalapenos and that beautiful red pepper I don't know what kind that is probably keystone resistant giant bell yes that's what it is okay so now we're going over to the tomatoes um actually side note those two beds back there the one with the straw is the peas. They're starting to come up really nice. So I went ahead and mulched them. And then the other one is where the potatoes were. And I got all those dug up. I got the bed weeded and amended. And I planted some roots for fall. So I did um, carrots, beets, parsnips, and rutabagas. So that's what's in that bed now. All right, we've made it into the cherry tomato um, mess. It truly is a mess. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to the big tomato jungle. Um, I see some. Carbon. All right, we're going back into the back part. There are so many Aunt Rubies ready. <laughs> and this one is a delicious. So let's pick some Aunt Rubies. size of these that makes me so happy all right well um that's a full basket and that makes me very happy so this is exciting um i am starting to freeze tomatoes to can later um i just core them and um I'll either cut them in half or if they're really big or if they're not, I'll just kind of score the bottom and then I throw them in a gallon sized freezer bag and that way I can use them later. Um, if you do that and then you thaw them out, the skins just right off. So it's a good rule of thumb if you are looking to can your tomatoes. Um, <laughs> so that's my preferred way to do it is to freeze them and then thaw them and then can them. So it just makes stuff easier. The bugs out here are ridiculous right now. So I'm gonna take my coffee and go fill it up. I'm gonna probably leave it out here if I don't remember to go get it and go do something with all these tomatoes. So um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.